How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe and today I've got a list of 13 really cool tricks and life hacks that you can use with your computer. And some of these are going to be just for Windows. Most of them are for all operating systems though. So hopefully you haven't heard of most of these and they are pretty useful. Now before we get started, I want to give a big thanks to who this video is sponsored by, LastPass. If you're not familiar, LastPass is a password manager that securely stores all your passwords for you, so you only have to remember one master password. So you never have to go through all the trouble of looking for forgotten passwords or worry about being locked out of your accounts or answering a bunch of security questions because it keeps track of everything for you, both on desktop and the mobile apps. And because it has a built-in password generator, you don't even have to spend time coming up with strong passwords yourself and remembering them. And that also makes it easy to use unique passwords on every website, which is extremely important in case any websites you use has their database compromised. LastPass basically puts your password security on autopilot, so you don't have to try and remember, write down, or reset your passwords, it just keeps track of everything in one secure place. And plus, one of the main features is it fills in passwords on websites for you, so you don't even have to type them in. And another cool feature is the ability to safely share your passwords with others through LastPass if someone needs access to your account, for example. So every step of the way, your data is protected and still conveniently accessible. As I've mentioned in the past, this is the password manager I've always used anyway for several years, so I can genuinely recommend it. And I've done several sponsored videos with them in the past as well. Plus, since then, they've added a lot of new features like support for new two-factor authentication methods, including Microsoft Authenticator and physical security keys from Yubico and more. And of course, multi-factor authentication login is definitely one of the best ways to prevent hackers from accessing any of your accounts. So if you want to check out LastPass, you can go to lastpass.com. And of course, I'll put a link in the description as well so you can find out more. Definitely recommend checking that out. All right, so now let's get into some cool tricks and life hacks for your computer. And these won't really be in any particular order. Now, starting off with number one, this one should hopefully save you some money at some point. And that is when you're doing some shopping online, try visiting the site in incognito mode to potentially reveal targeted discounts that may not have been shown to you before. So for example, say you go on some website and they're having a flash sale for some percentage off, try visiting that site with either a different browser or in incognito mode, and it may reveal a different discount. And the reason for that is a lot of times websites do targeting for different sale percentages depending on a cookie you may have on your, on your browser. So if you change that cookie, it may give you a completely different discount. And I actually have a real example of when I did this one time. I was on some website, I'm not gonna name names, but it said something like 40% off. And then after I ordered, I went on on a different browser for some reason and I noticed at the same exact time, it was offering 40% off with free shipping, which wasn't available to me. So I actually did call them out. I emailed their support and said, hey, I think I got uh, targeted with a s inferior discount. And then turns out they actually did give me the uh, free shipping on that. So it turned out well, but that's just a real example. They do do this on some sites. So moving on, these next few are having to do with shortcuts on your keyboard and mouse. They're pretty quick, but still useful. So number two is that if you ever find yourself scrolling down a long website and trying to read something, you can actually press the space bar to much more easily scroll down and it will actually jump to just above the bottom of the screen where you were at before. So you can just press space bar to continuously scroll down the whole page in chunks and know that you're not gonna miss anything way easier than scrolling down a little bit every time, should save you some time. Number three is extremely useful if you've never known about it before, and that is you can reopen closed tabs in pretty much all web browsers by pressing Control Shift T. I know this works on Chrome, Firefox, and Microsoft Edge, and I believe on Safari on Mac, you press Command Z and it basically does the same thing. But basically, if you accidentally close a tab, you're like, oh, I missed something, just Control Shift T, it'll open it up. And I know at least on Chrome, if you keep pressing it, it'll keep opening previously closed tabs before that. So super useful. I know you're gonna be glad when you remember that one next time. Next up, number four, I'm actually gonna combine a couple ones into one with this one. So the first is that you can actually select text different ways depending on how you click it. 
For example, if you double click on a word and then start highlighting, it will actually highlight by the entire word instead of by the individual letter. So if you know you're gonna be selecting an entire sentence, that could be useful. And if you triple click and start selecting, it will go by the entire paragraph. Might save you a couple microseconds, I don't know. And another really useful one is if you're in a browser, at least in Chrome, and you wanna select text that's part of a link, you can hold down Alt and then select and it won't click through to that link. So that should be useful instead of accidentally clicking a link and opening a new thing. And moving on to number five, this is gonna be the final keyboard shortcut I'm gonna talk about. And that is if you ever want to paste text without the formatting, you can simply press Control Shift V to paste it without bold or italics or anything like that. So I'm sure you know Control V paste regular with formatting, and now you can do it without if you just wanna paste the text. All right, on to number six. This one's kind of like a general life hack, and that is basically create an album in whatever photo software you use, whether it's Google Photos or iPhone Photos, and basically every time you get a new product or appliance, take a photo of the label so that next time you need to remember what model number you have or the serial number for that product, you don't have to go searching for it. And this is especially useful for something like a TV where, I don't know, you wanna look up features on that TV and you don't wanna to have to climb behind it and look at the exact model number that you bought, something like that, super useful. And for example, what I do in Google Photos at least is you can actually add little information text to it, which is searchable, so then you can add like TV, whatever brand name, and then when you search it, the serial number and the label will all come up next time. All right, moving on to number seven. This one might seem a bit strange, but could come in handy at some point. And that is you can actually have your router opt out of being included in location databases owned by like Google and other companies. So as you may know, a lot of companies, especially Google, like I just mentioned, they will actually make a map of like all the routers and access points literally around the world and then assign a location to that using things like GPS coordinates for phones that are attached to it. And they actually do this with your own router. And this makes it so if you're on your desktop, for example, it will give you a exact location of where you are in like Google Maps, even though it doesn't have a GPS location like your phone might. But there may actually be a couple reasons you might want to opt out of this, which I can talk about in a second. But if you do wanna do this, all you have to do is go into the SSID or the name of the access point in your router settings and add underscore no map to the SSID and then it will not be included with Google Maps and it won't use that as a marker for your location. So the first obvious reason you might wanna do this is if you're privacy conscious, of course that makes sense. But here's a less obvious reason that I discovered myself and why I know this. And that is, say you move, you move to a new apartment or a new house and you keep your router and take it with you. A lot of times, and in my case, Google kept the old location coordinates of that router. So every time I went on my desktop on Google Maps, it had my old location and it would not update. I couldn't figure out how to update it. So what I did was added no map. So it stopped using my router as location. And sure enough, it then had my correct location. And eventually I think it did update. So I took it off the access point name, but might come in handy, especially if you move. You can think back to this video and be like, ah, all right, I knew that would come in handy at some point. All right, next up, number eight. This one is for Gmail, and it might be kind of useful if you have suspicions about a email being spoofed or something like that. And that is, you can actually go to the little options menu next to an email and click show original, and it'll give you a whole bunch of information but what you wanna look for is a few different fields such as those called SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. And these are actually different authentication methods that a website can set up to verify an email was sent by them. And it should say pass for all of them if it shows those fields in the first place. Most big websites will have this set up correctly and if it shows pass for all of them, you can at least probably be sure that it was indeed sent from the email address that's listed in the from field. Now, if it's a suspicious email, always be sure to check that address. It might be like one letter off to make it look like the original domain. So even though it technically is sent from that, 
domain, it might be the wrong domain, if that makes sense. And of course, there's always the possibility that maybe it was sent from that legitimate email address from a friend, but maybe they had a virus that sent it. So if it's suspicious enough to have to check that, then it might be worth more looking into anyway. Now, on the other hand, if any of those fields, especially multiple of them say fail, then it may suggest that it's a spoofed email, but it doesn't guarantee that. A lot of times a website may just have a misconfigured DNS setting, which is actually more common than you may think. It's not super simple to set this up. So what you might wanna do is check previous emails that was sent by that person or website. And if it previously said it all passed and this time it says failed, then it's definitely worth being suspicious and verifying that they actually did send that email in some other way. So you're still gonna have to use common sense. If they all pass, you could probably be sure that it is legitimate. And if they don't all pass, at least it gives you a clue that you can look into further. All right, next up, this one's definitely gonna be down to preference, but I tr suggest at least trying it and that is to disable mouse acceleration. If you don't know what that is, basically it means if you move your mouse slowly, it will dynamically adjust your mouse cursor to move slower on the screen than it normally would, and if you move your mouse faster, it will move the mouse cursor faster relatively to the distance you moved it than you would if you were moving it slower. So basically it just makes the mouse move further when you move it faster. So first, let me show you how to do it, and then I'll explain a little bit why you might want to. So what you do is you go to the Start menu, and then you go to Mouse Settings, type that in, and then click it, and then go to Additional Mouse Settings, and then Pointer Options. And then what you wanna do is uncheck Enhance Pointer Precision. Now, the reason you might wanna do this is it makes it very difficult to develop muscle memory for when you're moving your mouse around. So if you tend to like, overshoot icons that are further away on the screen, or sometimes you, I don't know, click in the wrong place, it could be because you're moving your mouse slightly differently, and then it moves the mouse cursor differently, and it's very hard for your brain to like remember how far to move the mouse compared to how far it wants to on the screen. If you disable this, you won't have to ever worry about that anymore, and it will be a little bit difficult to get used to at first, but I can almost guarantee that once you are used to it, going back will be very difficult. However, if you are on like a touchpad on a laptop, that is one case where I would suggest actually keeping it on because the touchpad is so small. And also if you have a really small mouse pad and like a really big monitor, then it is also beneficial to probably keep it on because then you might not have that much room to get the mouse moved further across the screen. But even on day-to-day -day usage, I found it much more convenient to keep it off. And especially if you're gonna be playing video games like FPS, the muscle memory is really important. So therefore keeping mass acceleration off is kind of a big deal if you're gonna be playing games especially. All right, number 10, this is a pretty quick one. And that is with the task manager in Windows. If you go to options, you wanna select the option that says always on top. And the reason for that is if you're gonna be opening the task manager, a lot of times it's because a window is frozen and sometimes that is like a full screen window that it itself is set to be always on top. So say you're playing a full screen game and you press control alt delete or control shift escape to bring up the task manager, it might not be on top and then you can't access the task manager to end that process unless you do have this always on top setting and that way, no matter what's running, the task manager will always come to the front so you can disable whatever is frozen behind it. Next, number 11. This one's good if you have some startup programs that you can't seem to disable anywhere else. So you go to the task manager and it's not listed in the task manager for the startup tab, but you know it's obviously starting up and that is to go to the task scheduler feature in Windows and you can just go to the start menu, type in task scheduler and bring it up. And then there you click task scheduler library and it may show a whole list of stuff that is scheduled to start in Windows. And you probably wanna look for one that says something like on user login. And that means that when you log in, that program will be run. So if you have a program that for some reason starts up, even though you can't figure out how to disable it, that's a place to check. It might be hiding its settings in there. And to disable it, you simply delete that schedule and then it shouldn't start up with Windows automatically. Now, again, be careful what you delete here. There might be stuff that is important. So only delete something if you know what it is and wanna stop it from starting up. All right, moving on, we got a couple more. 
And number 12 is to change your DNS servers to something that is a little bit faster. If you don't know, a DNS server basically is what your computer uses to look up the IP address based on the URL you type in. So a lot of these do take some time, some are faster than others, and chances are if you don't have anything changed, it's just gonna be using your slow ISP's default DNS servers. To change it to something a lot faster, like Cloudflare's, which is 1.1.1.1, you may have heard me talk about it before, there's a long way and a short way. The first way is to do it on your individual computer. And to do that, this is gonna take a little bit of explaining to walk you through it, but you go to the control panel, and then network and internet, then network and sharing center, then click change adapter settings on the left, then you right click on whatever adapter is your ethernet adapter, then you go to properties, and then look for the one that says internet protocol IPv4, something like that, it'll say IPv4, and then there you also go to properties, and here is where you wanna change the setting. And you go to use the following DNS server addresses, and that's where you put in 1.1.1.1 or 1.0.0.1. And of course, you could use other public DNS servers that are a little bit faster, like Google has some, but Cloudflare is the one I just mentioned, are at the moment tested to be the fastest. If you don't wanna set this up individually on every single computer, you can actually do this on your router. And I'm not gonna go through the whole settings to do with that, because it's gonna be different for every person with depending on the brand you have. But basically just go into the router settings, there will be a section for DNS servers, and then you put it in there, and then all devices by default will use whatever the router's configured to, so you don't have to change it anywhere else. All right, finally, number 13, and that is that you can actually right click and drag things just like you can left click and drag things. And it gives you a couple options that makes it a lot easier to like duplicate files or move files and it'll save you a click or two. So for example, if you wanna copy a file, you right click and drag it and then right there, it'll give you the option to copy it or move it or create a shortcut and maybe even a few other options depending on what programs you have installed. And this is especially more useful if you do wanna create a shortcut because normally you have to right click it, create shortcut, then copy the shortcut and paste it wherever you want. In this case, you can just right click, drag, hit create shortcut and you're done. So I think that about covers it. Those are 13 really cool tricks and life hacks that hopefully you didn't already know that you can use with your computer. I definitely like to hear what you guys think. You can talk about that down in the comments section. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make a couple new videos every week, so it should be worth it. So thanks again for watching guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and have a good one.